Hi all, it's Denise and I'm in my studio this week. I'm doing a little spring cleaning, not only with my art supplies, but on my computer. And I came across a couple of online classes that I had done and I hadn't published them here before on my channel. So I thought, what the heck, let's share them. So here they are. I am working on one piece in this video and if I can pull them together, I'll add a few more pieces onto my channel in the next weeks. But I think there's some fun techniques in here that you might like. So I'm going to share them with you. This series was titled Blue Jean Babies and I did four pieces, I believe. I really, really enjoyed it because who doesn't love, love a denim jacket? But I never really did anything with them. So uh, these pieces, I'll link in, in the description below. They are available. And um, yeah, it's really fun. I had a great time working on them. So enjoy, and I will see you again next week. Okay, so here I am. This is the piece I'm working on. And you saw this one. And now I'm into a denim jacket thing. So that's what I'm adding in on my flowers. You know, no, no good reason why other than I really liked the way it looked. Now in this one, while, while you were taking a break, this was another photo I just printed off my computer and cut her, you know, ripped her to fit into my, my little scene here because I still do have a floral going on. I just added this text up here um, just to kind of demonstrate. You know, I've already painted that, but I needed something more, so I've added the text in, and I'm not, I'll probably make that disappear a little bit. But oftentimes for me, at this point, and I think it was Veronica that was asking, I'll take my Stabilo pencil and I'll figure out my lining that I want to create. And I just kind of do a really scribbly little line. And this will end up being the line that I keep for, for the painting. Um, I don't know if I need any more than that. I'll also go around and I just kind of create a squiggly little line that adds some definition to my flowers. I, I don't mind doing that at this point because I know I'm going to do it sooner or later. That's a, a carnation. So, And I just kind of make it scribbly. I don't get too lost into how it's going to turn out. There's a lot of texture happening under this. Oops. And I twist and turn my pencil as I'm going. As it helps me keep it loose. So then I can go in... And I don't want a solid dark line all the way around, but this is a good point that I can go in and make some of it go away. I've even started doing it with the polyacrylic because that also wets it and makes it dark. It also makes it permanent. So when I come, come back with other paint washes over it, it's not going to come up. But I have to make sure if I want to get rid of some of it, I get rid of it right now because it'll be permanent on there. So that that is some of the, one of the things I do at this point in the painting. Because it will help me define where I'm going. You know, do I want to make this area a whole different color? Um, and I might. I might. Um, I might want to go in with my very, I'm down at the very end of this uh, jar of cream. And if you remember my color palette, it's mostly all pink and green, so I think the denim jacket is going to be a nice addition to it. I can go right over this. But I'm not sure I like that cream, so I'm going to go back over it with a greenhouse paint and kind of mix in. And I, I'm catching a glare 
from my light, so it's kind of hit and miss what I'm doing here, but it's okay because it's just paint. I can come back and I can blend that in a little bit. I can pull my letters out because I'm not sure if I want that lettering there or not, but now I still have the option. Um, what I wanted to show you on this piece, so I will go around, now that I've got areas defined, I can go around and, and paint around those areas. And it helps me, it kind of draws a little diagram of where I'm going to paint. I think I might, I might leave this whole side just like it is and not paint anything. And remember last week I did the stencil that once I did the stencil and laid it down, I came back over it. Remember, I, I, I stenciled it and then I came back and rubbed the paint over it, which kind of gave it a nice effect. I can still see newsprint through that, but I can also come in and paint some of those little negative spaces and bring those out a little bit more. And then it also helps the green move into the painting. So a lot of that is very, you know, it's really intuitive when you get in. There's no, there's no perfect pattern. It's, and it's just paint. If you screw it up, you go over it with something else. Now for her, I never like to leave them the way they are, but you've got the whole outline there. You've got everything figured out as far as um, the highlights and everything with her face, but I want, want to kind of just paint her out. And just get a rough idea of where Oh, that's really yellow. That's much more yellow than I want. But it'll work for now. Because maybe it isn't going to be so bad. Because I've got so much pink going on here with the flowers that maybe changing up the color of her face will be good. And I'm just using the little golden uh, fluid paints for this. And you just kind of play around with it. I mean, obviously I don't want her eyes that dark. So I'll just kind of go over those and come back later and fill that in. But it's just making it more of, of what you want it to be. So so it, there's no harm in using a... Uh, a photograph, just go over it and make it what you want it to be. Now, okay, this is an indigo blue, but I want to add this piece of paper in here. Just because I want to add, I, I don't want that to be the only blue thing in here, so it might just be something I just add right there. Can you see that? Am I in the right spot? Okay. And, and and I for my dimension, I've made in the very first class I pulled out some some little wood blocks I was going to add in. So yesterday I covered those blocks with a pink flower, more more tissue paper with a script, and this has a piece of the cyanotype paper on it with script over it. So I think I may I'm not sure where I'm going to put that. But this little blue guy, I'm in a, I'm not sure. They're just going to kind of lay out somewhere. So for, the, for whoever it was that asked about dimensional, 
I could easily just lay these down on, you know, the papers on, but I like the dimension of it. Um, so, so this has got more of a turquoise in it. So I wanted to make her jacket have a little bit more turquoise. So it'll pull in that piece of paper. And I'm actually using the uh, polyacrylic as my medium. I don't have to paint the whole thing in. I can just, you know, get the feel of it. This is actually the fun stuff, I think. <laughs> the little detail stuff. It's fun to watch, too. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, that's kind of dark. And, and you only, you know, you only need to make enough, use enough paint on it so it looks like it's in, you know, it's part of the painting. Um, her hair, I don't even have a color out for that. I'm trying to make a brown with all of this, but I may not be able to. And then again, it's just going in and that's a really ugly color. Just know that I'll be fixing this. But I, I just wanted to, to give you the idea of, yeah, you can add, add this in and just paint around it and paint over it. Um, and, and it becomes part of the painting. I could probably even... I'm using my Stabilo. And then... I can come back over and water that down and wash it through. That was kind of fun too. But this girl will end up looking more like this. You know, I t actually took my time and, and did some, some strokes in her hair and worked the jacket. She had on a completely black outfit and I just changed that. The, the, I liked her stance of standing there very casually with her hands in her pockets. And so that's what I was going for. And this gal is going to be the same kind of thing. Um, and then I think this is going to go right here. Is that, that's too weird because that's too much at her head. Um, this is my vase, so I'll define the vase a little bit more. And I think it's going to go something just like that. Vase will be more defined. And so that, for me, this is the dimensional things that, and that, I'm, uh, that I was talking about in the beginning of class, if you want to add those in. So this, this piece still has a long way to go. But I'm, I'm in a good place now where I needed to make decisions on what was happening with it for my focal and where I was going to put these to be able to help me know how to finish this off. I, I usually use E6000, uh -huh. but okay. yeah, it, I can feel it. It's in there, but it's not coming out. So I would also use my caulk. This is an adhesive caulk. 
And if I wanted to right now, I can just put that right on and that's gonna hold it in place really well once it's dry. I, I hope that's where I really wanted that. Because <laughs> it's there now. Uh, I mean, I could wipe this off, but I think that's a good spot for it. It's kind of right here in this little grouping. Instead of adding it somewhere that pulls your eye somewhere else, it's your eye goes here and you're right in this little group. And then I'll add this over here. I, I don't know. I think maybe. I'm not sure that's going to be blue enough to, to do what I was... Uh, shooting for but if not I can always tear a little piece of this and add a chunk on here these could be considered final details because um, you really want to wait until you're at the end before you add something like this in or oh, actually I like it right there because then it's not so one two three it's over here more on this side and it separates them a little so that's what I'm thinking for this one